Hey, before this video starts, I want to introduce our sponsor, me. <laughs> I'm the one making these darn videos. ObsessedGarage.com. We're running a Black Friday sale, which we've done every year. It's the only sale of the year we do. Uh, you want to get things like this. My beloved uh, uh, Merca polisher, I think you want this. Get it on sale. Krenzel pressure washer is not only on sale, but there's special promo pricing. Go to go to the site and check it out. Uh, that runs during the, the dates from 24th and 27th. And then I think the coolest thing we've done in a while if not ever, is the OG vacuum system. That'll also be on sale. Everything on the site is on sale, 10% off, free shipping over, I believe, 100 bucks. And uh, if you're uh, inside the Hex members, there's special promos for you guys as well. Make sure to go check it out. All right, I got the code, I got the keys, come on in. I'm gonna pick a car to wash. What do you think? What should we do here today? The E46 looks pretty clean. We go to Seca. I'm not washing CRX. Don't you think it'd be cool to wash this thing? Well, uh, maybe we'll do a drift and wash after Adam teaches me how to drift. We'll do a drift and wash soon. I'll certainly wash the, uh, the, the, the touring, the Meissen blue. I'm leaning towards R34. You know, I did polish this thing. So, so we, may, we may do the R34. Hmm. I'd like to wash the E92 330. He says it works, so I think we do this. For our first wash and talk here at LZ Compound, let's do the R34. Let me get the trickle charger off it and let's go, uh, now that I know how to ride, drive a right-hand drive car after I drove the, uh, what is it, the GTT, not the GTR. Wrong side, god dang it. It's a little dusty, not super dirty, so it's right up my alley. I like that little, little towel set up there. Oh shoot, can I get in there? Having all these cars, you know, it's kind of a kind of odd to have to deal with so many cars and dealing with keeping them all running. I don't have to, I don't know what that's like. I don't know how to, I don't know how to drive a darn right hand drive car. Is it alright if I go wash your car for you? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or maybe stealing it. One or the other. I, I pulled up, I'm like, what is Matt doing with the GTR? Yeah, I'm gonna go wash it. It was a little dusty. Every oh. week, every week, we're gonna do a wash and talk with one of your cars. I got your wash bay all cleaned up, so I figured this is the best car to do first. Normally, people would steal a car, and take it for a joyride. Matt steals and takes it for a joy wash. <laughs> Somebody's gotta do it. <laughs> all right, enjoy. You can get. I think I should get used to driving a right-hand drive pretty easily. All right, let's do it. Perfect. All right, so today's mission is to wash the car. I'm gonna use all the OG products. I'm sure we'll do a video with Adam doing some, some Creo specific stuff. So for all of you that are Adam you know, fans, uh, this one, this wash and talk is gonna be a little bit different. What I normally do is just, uh, I like to feel like, I like it to feel as if there was a hang in my garage. So the video is usually an hour, hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes and I'm washing the car, sharing with you what's going on in life and business and family and cars and all the, all the things in between. Uh, today we're gonna focus a little bit more on product uh, because it's uh, Black Friday weekend and so uh, if you're you know, if you're interested in the future of washing, wash and talks, if you're not interested in any of the products, maybe you, maybe you wanna just kind of click through this one. Uh, but the next, uh, next videos will be more of just talking life and business and how the LZ project is going here. Uh, but I figured this was the best car to wash first. Let's do it, get all set up and uh, enjoy the process. I uh, have to confess something here. We, Tommy, Nick, me, Waba, we came out here uh, earlier this morning, spent about two, we were out here about two hours or so, guys. About two hours cleaning it up. 
So we threw you know, an, almost an entire dumpster full of stuff away. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do out here, since I'm here, staying here, eventually, gonna, we already have a mosaic boom pole, so gonna, Mike and I are going to have a little side project thing, I think. But for now, the 1122 is on sale, so I think you know we should probably show you the 1122. Was uh, Adam still functioning? Is the 1122s working? Yeah, it's working. The spreader has a broken O ring now, so that's going to be fun. Oh, no. Yeah, so you might have to go shortgun mode if we can pull the O ring. Are you kidding me? Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know how they're washing here. It's I've never had an O ring fail, ever. Yeah. Crap, how am I going to wash? Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm like, that's the one thing I don't need because I have that here. So anyway, this wash bay eventually will put Mosmatic wand holders, and I think we'll probably put Mosmatic mat holders on the side here, uh, boom pole overhead, and uh, I think that this could be a, a really nice wash bay. Water tends to run out. What I would probably do is dig that out a little bit there and put some rock in so the water can run. And uh, I'm going to cut this conduit that's on the side over there. I'm going to cut that off. Uh, but yeah, this is a good size. This is probably, what, maybe 20 feet wide? 20 feet wide, probably what, 24 feet deep or so. It's a pretty decent setup. And, uh, and so let me show you what we did inside here. This was filled with a bunch of junk. Uh, and so we spent a couple hours cleaning this out completely. So I have all Adam's or some of Adam's Griot stuff here. And then I'm going to actually mount all the Griot shelves uh, on the wall while I'm here. I'm going to get those all set up there. There's a conduit right here I'm going to cut off. Uh, and so I'm going to push this cabinet over. I'm going to put all the Griot shelves here, and then we'll probably do our pressure washer system here at some point. Uh, Tommy set up all the Ego charger and all that stuff there, and our Krenzlas will sit here. These are Adam's Krenzlas, which they you know, beat the crap out of them, but they're, that's what they're built for. They're built for getting beat. And, um, uh, but the, the 1122 is the standard they've been washing. You know, Trevor's been washing, Jeff's been washing here for Adam for years. And uh, all the cars, you know, they're, wa they're using the Krenzla all day. You know, it's usually two, three, four cars at a time. But this, uh, this setup looks pretty nice now. I couldn't come out here without, uh, without doing some work beforehand. This is all my stuff. So Tommy went to my garage and raided it. Uh, and so these are the products we're going to talk about specifically here today. Uh, and so each product I'm using, I'll kind of refer to it. Uh, actually, maybe you Adam LZ followers should hang around and teach you something a little bit about what products to use and why. One of the key requisites, one of the big mistakes I saw in here is that they had like 500 different products, like all these different products, which just gets confusing. I like to narrow it down to just what I'm using. So in my garage, I only have the products that I'm using. All other products get ditched. Uh, give them to somebody, throw them away, do something with them, throw them off the side of a building, do something with them to where they're not clogging up your cabinets. Uh, you want your cabinet to have only what you're using. If you found you haven't used it in a couple of months, that's Maddie's rule, it's gone. And let me, you know, just keep a nice stock of the things that I really like. When something replaces something else, then get rid of the old. Give it away, find a neighbor, throw it away. Um, you're probably better off throwing away because you're going to give it to your neighbor and he's going to put it on his shelf and he's going to end up with a bunch of crap and you're not, not, uh, not helping him out. So let me get my buckets ready to go. So OG bucket package. This was like my fourth or fifth product. The, the product has changed quite a bit, but back in the day, those of you who've been following me for a really long time, at one point, uh, this is before YouTube, I bought 27 different buckets from like, from like probably 17 different, 18 different manufacturers. And I had all these buckets in my living room and I'm testing the tensile strength and which ones are the right size. So I bought three gallon, five gallon, six gallon, seven gallon, uh, and then I tested them out using them. And I found that the six gallon bucket was the perfect size because I didn't need to refill it. So I didn't need to refill the bucket, which made my user experience a whole lot better, not having to go back and fill it back up even on the Raptor. Uh, and then these have the, what are these, Nick, what is this company? Uh, detail guards. So we've made, so these are Letica buckets, which I source, Gamma seals, which I source from Grit Guard, the Grit Guard three inch casters with the Grit Guard bucket connector, the uh, Grit Guard dollies, and then, uh, and then we have the detail guard, 
detail guard that we just said? Detail guards, uh, little cyclone thingies to keep the dirt at the bottom, which I'm not a big stickler for, but uh, originally the detail guards didn't fit in the six gallon buckets very well, and now they do. Uh, and so that's what we have in here. Bucket package is insanely expensive, so now's the time to buy it this weekend because if you're at Inside the Hex member, it's 15% off, free shipping. Buckets cost, what, like 50 bucks to ship or something like that because it's this huge freaking box. Uh, and so I'm probably going to lose money on buckets, but um, the buckets are normally 300 bucks for the set, uh, for the set of three because there's also a wheel bucket as well. Um, I know you think I'm nuts saying buckets are $300. We've sold thousands, thousands and thousands of bucket packages because everybody says you can go source this somewhere else. And then once they do the research, they realize it's really not easy to get. Uh, and so we have been doing these for many, many, many years now, almost five years now. Uh, and so my bucket setup looks like so. And I keep the wheel stuff in the wheel bucket. I have the gamma seals of everyone with the lids on them. Uh, the other thing you want to do when you get the bucket package, you want to drill out holes in the bottom so the water will run through your uh, your grit guard bucket or your dolly. You want they, they don't pre-drill them because in some applications, they sell these in some janitorial supply area, you know, uh, uh, part, you know, businesses to some janitorial supply businesses. And so some of them don't want holes in, in, the, in the base. So us car guys, we put holes in them. So anyway, that's the bucket package. We get that out. Let's get the 1322 out. Or sorry, 1122, not 1322. Tommy's trying to fix my O-ring. So... It's common, common for an O-ring to fail on the Chinese fittings, not the Swiss fittings. And so, but I wouldn't put past, there's a lot of people using the stuff here. And so I wouldn't put it past anyone to mess it up. So this is a 20 foot inlet hose. We really didn't need it to be this long. I don't know what water, spot free water system this is. We don't even know if it's working, but we're gonna run it through it anyway. The TDS here, we just had Kinetico come out, was 12,000. I didn't even know that was possible. It's halfway to, to, to ocean water. So we're, uh, we're dealing with some pretty gnarly water. I bet you this, this uh, spotless thing is probably toast, but let's run it anyway. So we have a quick disconnect on the side. Let's get our power cord ready here. So when you're using the 1122, so this is the very first product outside of t-shirts that I'd, I'd launched. Uh, when you're using the 1122, you always have to put it on the side like this uh, because there's an oil bath inside of this section here. There's an oiled section. Uh, and the plungers, there's three plungers. Uh, and the three plungers are what pressurize or create, create pressure with the water. And so there's a wobble plate that kind of turns like this as the plate pushes the plunger in, it pressurizes the water and you know, sort of pushes it through the pump. And so there's spring, little retainer springs that, uh, that, that hold those, those plungers in place and then they sort of spring back into position. Uh, and so those need to be lubricated. And so if this is standing up, all the oil sits in the bottom of the bed and it doesn't get you know, into the components that needs to, that need to be oiled. Uh, and so this, there's no oil pump on this. Uh, and so you need to make sure that you're leaning it on its side like so. This is the, you know, how you'd operate the machine. So you can run this off of a 15 amp circuit, but you really want 20. Um, especially with the foam cannon, you're gonna end up tripping a 15 amp breaker. Luckily we have a 20 amp dedicated right here. Good to go. This, we don't need this anymore. So this isn't the one I've been carting around with me. This is the one that has, this is one of Adam's. There's a lot of yellow jackets around here. So that's our inlet connection. Tommy's going to fix my O-ring, oh boy. This is old, this is from the, this is one of the originals. There's an MTM brass connection here. I kind of want to go get mine. I didn't bring my gun and wand because I knew we had one here and now I freaking need it. So let's pull our hose out. This is a, uh, is it 15 meter hose? So it's right at 50 feet. And it's a quarter inch. You can't swap the hose on this. You know, we've been looking at doing that for years. The hose is really good. 
Uh, the only reason we'd really want to swap it is if you run it over or mess it up. The hose is what, like 225 bucks or something like that. It's really expensive uh, because it's a relatively pliable, it's a single wire, uh, quarter inch hose, you know, sourced from Germany. And, uh, but there's a, there's a really sophisticated swiveling system in it, uh, in the hose reel. Uh, and so to swap it out, is just not really very practical. I need to go and get one of those LZ uh, Viper chairs, but we're going to use the Grios that they have in here. Ew. I don't think, I don't know if Grios even makes this one anymore. So we use this little chair while we're here. <laughs> I'd forgotten what it was like to not have a separate bucket filler. Then we got to put a bucket filler in for them. All right, let's see how this looks. So I've got to place an order on obsessedgarage.com for my next wash out here because we're not up to snuff yet. All right, let's turn some water on. See if anything explodes. All right, we're looking good here. Let's see if we got power. This pressure washer is so good. And you know this thing has been used and abused. Never had, you know, oil change, never had seal kit done. And it's just still kicking. All right, we're good. Our O-ring's working. Yeah, that's, that's the best part of no water ever. All right, let's fill up our rinse bucket. The old fashioned way. So because the TDS is so high, we want to try to treat the water if we can. I'm working on getting a uh, system out here for the whole, the whole compound. Because we're right next to the ocean and we're in the swamp here. And so the water is really bad. Right, the wheels are coated. The tires are denibbed. That's good. So Jeff and Trevor have done a good job making sure the nibs are off the tires. I'm hoping it stops drizzling long enough so we can, once we get it washed, we can pull it back in over, over next door. So I brought all my foam cannons from home, but mine are all set up for, with a 1.5 millimeter orifice and we need a 1.25. Uh, and so the 1122 is operating at around two gallons a minute, which means we need a one and a quarter orifice in order for this to function properly. Uh, and so I'm gonna dump my, I didn't bring a gallon of brake buster, so I'm gonna put an order for that. Uh, we're going to do brake buster on the wheels, clean the tires uh, with the same brake buster product, and then uh, let me just see how it does with a 1.5 on it. It might do okay. Let's just see. But we made the transition to uh, I stock these as well, and we set these up with a proper plug. Um, you really want the OG spec. You can see how much this has been beaten up, and uh, all we did was change an O-ring, and now we're fully functioning. Uh, we also want to get him the proper uh, uh, stainless fitting here, the Mosmatic, you know, fitting. Uh, but this, this is my gun that I designed that, you know, only we sell. Uh, and then this Grios Garage foam cannon, we'll set them up, pre-tape, pre-torque uh, them. And so I don't, I don't charge anything for that. I'm just hoping that, you know, people will buy it from us. And, um, and so we, we, but we set them up so they're specced for your pressure washer. So if you go on the site and look at it, it'll show you, you'll, you'll have the option to spec it for a low flow pressure washer or high flow. Yeah, that's fine, it works. You know, so we're not getting maximum uh, foam because I don't have the right orifice. I've got a bigger orifice on it, but it'll work. So let's get, looks like we can probably get our proper brush. This is a detail factory brush that I cut the tip off of. And then I put a microfiber madness cover on it to, I think it's the best combo. Now we don't sell it done that way but in many videos I've shown you how to do it. Uh, so you can buy the combo on the site and then just cut the tip off and get it to fit this.
And then the old tried and true is a detail factory large. And sorry, easy detail large, not detail factory. And then we can get in behind the, behind the caliper here. To grab a new one of these. I've been using this for months. I usually get about six months out of the lambskin mitt. These are 10 bucks. I bring these in from the UK. A company called Flexi Pads. And uh, it's time for me to replace mine. It's still good, but it's probably time for a new new version. I love tea cleaning TEs. They're so easy to clean. These endless brakes are sick. I've always wanted endless brakes on something. I've been looking at an R35 Nis, Nis, Nismo GTR. I've been thinking about it. Don't I have a bottle of Brake Buster? I think I do. Got a bottle of Brake Buster here. So Brake Buster is my favorite uh, wheel and tire cleaner. So if your tires are maintained, now my guys, Jeff and Trevor, have been maintaining this car. Uh, and so they're OG spec. Uh, and so they, um, I think Trevor brings his own kinds <laughs> of pressure washer, uh, but this is from my house. We're still working on the labels. So if you do buy the labels, just know we're still fighting with it. Uh, the bottles need to be fluorinated. So that's our next step. This is a, my new prototype stainless steel tip. Uh, but I like using Brake Buster on wheels. So we just put Brake Buster in the foam cannon to clean the wheels. And then I'll take and add a little bit more Brake Buster to the, uh, to the straight up to the tires. Because when you, when you run Brake Buster through the foam can, you're diluting it a bit. Uh, and so I put this on the tires and then I grab a Detail Factory brush. This is actually their interior brush. I like using this on tires. Now, we have some stronger stuff for cleaning tires like uh, Shine Supply Wise Guy if you're, if you're setting up your tires. But this I'm just maintaining. So I wanna clean the surface dust, but I don't wanna strip it. Yeah, these are coated for sure. You can always tell when a wheel is coated by how the water behaves, plus how it cleans. I really like to get this off. It's a pretty stubborn, stubborn looking marker. That looks a little better. I'm telling you guys. If you follow me to the promised land, I'll lead you to a really amazing user experience. This is what my very, one of very few talents is making the car washing experience the best it can be. It's still work. You still have to put in the effort, uh, but notice how we have the swivel in the gun. And so the hose is kind of kinked up there or not kink, can't really kink a, uh, a, a high quality pressure washer hose. But as I turn, the gun, this is why you want to swivel. And so now my hose straightens out. I'm telling you, I may want this job. Wash Adam's cars, take care of his, uh, take care of all this stuff. Oh shoot, I need my foam cannon. This is not the right tip. That's another thing I need to place an order for. You don't want this tip. You want the OG spec tip. It's foaming okay. See how it's watery like that? We would get more aeration, more foam if I had the right orifice in the foam cannon. But we got the product on the wheel. The wheels aren't super dirty. They're coated. Somebody's been skimping here and not cleaning the full inner barrel. You see all that dirt? This car probably gets a lot of uh, waterless wipe downs because it doesn't get driven a whole heck of a lot. So it's probably been driven several times and then waterless cleaned. And then you kind of do this deeper clean. Yeah, you know, I, this car, uh, I drove that, the SR20 
R RTT, not the or GTT, not the GTR, the Adams giveaway car. And that thing sounds the SR20 sounds pretty darn good. And I just don't like that quick spool turbo business, you know. I like to wind out a naturally aspirated engine, even in my 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 Evo. I'm just not super enjoying it. Today. It's kind of weird. I've been I've been washing with uh, four gallons a minute, not uh, not two gallons a minute. So it feels feels a bit lean to me. But really, this is a safer, easier, more comfortable experience doing two gallons a minute. I think that's the sweet spot for pressure washing a car. It doesn't tend to spray back on me as much. Almost no chance of damage and it's it's enough flow to get the job done. that yellow off of this one too. It's a uh, weight position mark for mounting and balancing. All right, let's do the exhaust tips in the back real quickly here. I think this has a custom titanium exhaust on it, doesn't it? Slack. I mean, if you can't do a custom, you know, installed pressure washer, I'm telling you guys, right now is the time. Go to obsessedgarage.com, buy the OG spec. What do we call it, OG spec? Portable, Portable Krenzel Solution. It's, it, I'm telling you, I've never had anybody say, oh, this sucks, I don't like it. The only people who say it sucks, they don't like it, are ones that don't have it. Because it's magical. And it's a buy once, have for, well, you probably won't have it for the rest of your life because once you get used to it, then you're gonna want a, uh, you're gonna want a custom install solution. So I just spray a little brick buster on there. I didn't know Adam lived in Montana. You know what we need to do with this? We need a little P. Hey, don't we have P21S here? So this is the little secret formula. Can we make? Can you go in and make this RYS if it's? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's make it reserve. Out of stock. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I can make it RYS. Yeah, we need to make this reserve your spot. This stuff. So this is called P21S polishing soap. This is like an old formula. And so what we do here comes with this little sponge. So normally I would just clean with, with wheel cleaner, uh, but occasionally on a tip like this, a titanium tip, I take a little bit of this product, wet the sponge down, take a little bit of this, and this soap has a little bit of abrasive in it, not enough to scratch the metal, but I would do this once every, you know, depending on your car, I'm, I'm sure this is probably catless and tuned, depending on your car on how often you would wanna do this. Let's see, we're gonna get. So this, this is something you do in between like CarPro metal polish and, uh, and you know, just using your wheel cleaner to clean the, clean the wheels. So I'll do a couple of different coats of this. I think this stuff is like 30 bucks or something, 25 bucks, and you'll have this for the rest of your darn life. This one bottle. Yeah, now, $14. that's 14 bucks? Yeah. That's oh, cheap. Yes. All right, so we have some coming. It's on, uh, we have something on our website right now. So if you go to the site, you're freaking out. Black Friday, oh my gosh. It says out of stock. It's what we have something called, we call reserve your spot. If just place the darn order and we're gonna, we'll go get it, you know, if we, and, and, and we'll let you know when it's coming. So on our out of stock page, it'll let you know where it is, what the status is.
but this is something you should have in your detail arsenal. Now, one word to the wise is to make sure that you, so I, I got this all wet. I'm gonna leave it open. So don't just seal it up, it'll get all moldy and nasty. So I'm using the soap and I don't wanna seal it up for maybe, you know, just let it sit for a few days. So this dries out and that dries out. This works on titanium, works on pretty much everything. There you go. See, no more dirt. Not super difficult to do. And now I won't have to do that to this car for probably four or five months, maybe a little, little bit more often because this is a, uh, you know, catless car. Secretly, I picked this because I know it's coated because I did it. I'll show you what we're gonna do to the rotors here in a minute. Uh, well, in 30 minutes, but I'll show you what we're gonna do to the rotors to help it with rust. So a little procedural thing for those of you guys who are new to this, if you're still hanging around, I like to get all the gunk, like get all the brake dust out, but you know, you don't wanna get the pressure washer too close to the wheel. And so, I always like to spray off the wheel first. Some people like to put product on first. Uh, in this particular application, I like to get the, the brake dust out first, as much as I can. So this product is a heavy alkaline product, so it's a pH of around 11 or 12. And uh, it's different from like Adam likes to use, and his guys like to use Griot's heavy duty wheel cleaner. That has a product called sodium thiglocolate, a chemical in it, sodium thiglocolate. Um, I don't feel the need for sodium thiglocolate in, you know, it's the iron remover, because my, um, my wheels are always coated and half of my cars are, more than half of them are carbon ceramics. So I like this just alkaline high pH wheel cleaner. It foams much better and uh, it doesn't stink up the house. And so if you do this and you wash your cars regularly, then the need for an iron remover every wash is just not necessary. I've also noticed the wheels are pretty clean so I haven't really had to mess with the lugs either. So, but normally I would hit it with the lugs. I like wheels like this, take the time, reach behind, get the back of the spoke, we got the back of the wheel, we hit the caliper, we hit the hat of the rotor, and just get the whole thing clean. And I'm telling you, lambskin mitt, this is the way to go. They're 10 bucks. Don't buy too many of them because like I said, this will last you six months or so before you have to replace it. Mine's probably older than six months. Washing, you know, a car a week or more. All right, what am I doing? Let's see the tires. Gosh, people, I can't wait to get you the stainless tips. It's so freaking. Not only does it look cool, it works fantastically well. Last wheel. I'm cheating a little on today's wash and talk because I don't only have uh, Waba here with me. <laughs> so we're getting a lot better angles than I normally would. So don't get, uh, don't get, too excited on the next one. I got the camera 30 feet away. You know, when I started doing this, these were some of the first videos that I made and it was a way for me to connect with people. And I thought, why would I cut out and try to make it quote unquote entertaining when we can make a much more 
I think, a much more authentic connection by leaving all the follies and fumbles and then talking through the process. And despite the, you know, the feedback over the years of, hey, your videos are too long or you're too long-winded or you're breathing too heavy or whatever, uh, I've continued to stay on this path of the hang. You know, we're, we're in the garage together, or you're in my garage, you're on a stool right next to me, and we're chatting about life, business, cars, you know, the washing process, the pursuit of functional excellence. And that's built this amazing business for me and has built a really great life. And uh, I think I'm going to continue that formula despite all, you know, despite people telling me to do something different. This is what I want to watch. And so I'm producing the kind of content, the kind of video that I would want to see, that I wished others did. And it seems to be working out, so I think I'm going to continue doing it. I forgot to do the wheel well. So notice I always take a little more time to rinse out on the last wheel. Hit our wheel cleaner on the tire. I mean, you can get away with just the, uh, the easy detail brush instead of doing the microfiber madness, but I like having those. And then last step is the tire. See, so this is the original bristle brush. Regular brush. Just a little stiffer. I find that on my fancy wheels with low profile tires, I haven't, I like the interior version a little better with the black bristles that are a little softer, but this works too. That yellow spot. Whatever is on these tires is not OG tire dressing. I can tell you that. All right, next step. I'm gonna put this away. I'm done with this. This will go home, and uh, we'll get our stuff set up. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-wash the car. Now I don't have this product yet, but I'm working on it. I'm bringing it here. So this is from a company called Built Hamber out of the UK. Uh, it's not available in the US currently, uh, and, uh, but we're hoping to be able to bring it to you first quarter next year is our, our hope. Don't tell anybody, but that's the, that's the plan. So this is a pre-wash that we're gonna put on the car for about five minutes, and then we're gonna rinse it off. The car is not super dirty. That's about all I need there. The car's not super dirty, but uh, I'm kind of addicted to this process now. I have to apologize to all the Europeans. I've been talking trash on snow foaming for years, saying it's unnecessary. Uh, in the beginning, using waxes and the original coatings, I didn't think they could hold up to some of these really caustic snow foams. But Pete Hamber is a chemistry wizard, and so he's created this product in a combination with you know modern coatings that are really stout we end up with a really amazing combination. So this product, I'm probably not doing this. You know, I, have it, I have it set up for using straight up. So normally on my foam cannon setup, because I've got five, uh, four gallons a minute, normally I would uh, just run it straight. But with this, I'm gonna run it roughly. 60-40. We'll get into more detail on how panel impact ratio and stuff like that in the future. Oh geez. Oh.
So this is a sugar-based pre-cleanser that is attacking the dirt, grease, grime, gunk on the surface. It also has some corrosion in inhibitors in it. And, uh, but it's not gonna attack our coating. I'm not gonna attack our protective layer. layer. More is not better, just get it on the surface. This, you can leave in here. But I would probably need to do a little more dialing in with the dilution there. Uh, with the, I just don't use the 1122 quite as much, but we'll be sure to provide you all that detail in the future. So let's leave this here. Let's do the MTM foam cannon, which is the original. Let's get this set up with the old OG quick disconnect on it. Now this product, this is only going to be available for a little while. This is uh, GFX, which is the Christmas version of GSF, which is, I think, the best soap on the planet. This is a pH neutral soap uh, that's designed uh, not so much to clean the surface, but really I'm using this for lubrication. So I'm gonna put some in the bucket. It smells like, I'm telling you, there's no better smell like Christmas scent than that, you know? It's so good. And I'm normally not for this kind of cheesy stuff, but I'm getting happy in my old age, you know? So I'm starting to have a little bit of fun with it, with life. So I figured, why can't I have a little fun with some scent? And you can tell me that I would have uh, not done this several years ago. So I'm doing 150 milliliters of soap. Hold that for me. And I'm going to put about 600 milliliters of water. That's why I filled up my rinse bucket first. Tommy, can you grab my cap? Yeah. We'll just set this here for now. So because the car is not giant, I don't need to fill this all the way up. So. We're working on a quick disconnect solution for the Griot's foam cannon. And so I'll put a 750 milliliter solution together here total. So 600 of water, roughly, and 150 milliliters of soap. I like to put a cap on here so I can shake it up. So I gotta talk to Rusty about getting moving on. I really need one for the Griot's foam cannon. It's going to be a lot more expensive, a lot more metal. <laughs> yeah, that's fine with me. I just want it. All right, so we'll put our long wand back on. I like this. I've got a washing assistance, camera assistance, Instagram assistance, and Nick. Nick was our prepping the wash bay assistant, actually, primary. All right, so it's been on the car for, you know, three, four, five minutes. The car is not super dirty, so I'm going to get it off. And I usually like to wash bottom up when I'm doing a rinseless or a, uh, a pre rinse on a rinseless. So now the concept here is that I'm getting, say, 80% of the dirt off the car prior to touching it. To me, there is no such thing as a full touchless so I still feel like I, I need to wash the car you know I don't I don't want to go to drying it right now oh yeah we could really make this great if I made a like a rock bed drain out there So this is the one time I wash bottom up. Probably doesn't really matter, but because if I wash top down, I'm rinsing off all the all the product or most of the product. And so instead I'm getting the product to, you know, hopefully take the dirt with it. All right. So now we're gonna foam it again with our magical GFX. So GFX, there was like I don't know, 2,500 bottles of it or something like that available, and we bought, you know, three quarters of them, or more than three quarters of it. Oh, it's right here. Oh, it's in the bucket. <laughs> Got it. 
So now I'm going to foam the car and then use this too. Actually, I want to fill up my soap bucket first. Can you grab me um, a, give me the uh, deli, deli pad. So this guy, we worked with uh, Microfiber Madness to get the sizing and shape and weight of this. Uh, because it's a purple car and it's dark, dark color, uh, I'm going to use this ultra soft. There's more microfiber content to this, but uh, this, if you have, if, if you have anything darker than this, like Bruce, my Brewster car and up, you know, black, purples, dark, dark grays, I'd use the softer pad, less chance of marring. So normally I would foam, then fill up my bucket, but that would be with the bucket filler. This is, takes a lot longer. So we'll at least get some water in here and then I'll blast some pressure in there to agitate it. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah, give me the other head. So if that ever happens to your MTM or any foam cannon, that means that the filter's clogged. This really hard water doesn't help. There we go. This whole area will smell like this for a couple hours. See, that's the foam we're looking for. When you have the proper size orifice, you have the proper dilution, that's the kind of foam. On the pre-rinse, you probably don't even want that much foam. You want it to be able to run. So good. So you can see why I mixed. And I've got a, you know, 100 milliliters or so, 150 milliliters left. And I'll dump that excess into my bucket here. Gosh, what did we do the days before our quick disconnect? It feels so pedestrian. And I'm using the same GFX in my soap bucket. Cannon, and then what we'll do is the old trickaroo here. Foam it up. And it wouldn't be great if I had a, a boom pole, but you know, if I had a little holster, maybe I could hang it from this or something. No, that's oh, not gonna work. Here we go, I'll stand there whole time. <laughs> I like this wash bay. Needs a little, little matty uh, next levelness, but I do like it. Soap is so good. So anyway, we have, uh, how many bottles we have left, guys? Thousand. Oh, we have a lot left. You guys, you guys need to buy more. I mean, we only have a few left. Get your orders in. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> so we've sold a third of it or so that we had. Right. Yeah, I right, shoot, I don't care. We keep it for a while. Yeah. I like it. So the size of this pad. So we, we shrunk the pad or, you know, Mateus shrunk the pad a little bit because of this one has higher microfiber content than the regular one. And we, it, was, it, was, it was too heavy. Uh, and so the pad, I actually really like this size. It's really nice. It's not too big, not too small. When you're washing any car, even if you pre-cleanse it, this is where people are always arguing with me about, well, you need to do one bucket method because putting back in the bucket is terrible. Well, I, 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 my count, I need 13 pads. So you shouldn't be washing the whole front clip of the car with one pad. Plus my argument also is the dirt is on the car, right? The dirt is on the surface. So now the dirt's, some of the dirt's on the pad, some of the dirt's still on the surface, but I've agitated it. Hopefully the soap's encapsulated it, or at least is taking it with it. And so if I get a new pad, 
So if I got a new pad for right here, the dirt's still there. And so if I go dunk this in the bucket, I'm getting like 90% of the dirt out and it's going in the bucket. And so it just doesn't make any sense to me to have to go get 13 pads out to wash, wash a car. Because I think most people, what they're doing, they're using a pad and then they're setting it aside, but they're only using four pads on a whole car. So now I've got this dirt. If I just keep washing with this dirty side of the pad, then I load up way more dirt than the 10% or 5% or 3% or whatever's left after I do that. So, and the proof of the one, of the, of the one bucket methoders is that, well, there's more dirt in that bucket. Well, no kidding. I just took it out of the pad and put it in the bucket. But the dirt is still on the surface of the car. That's the whole thing. So using a new pad doesn't really matter because I'm still touching the dirt that's on the surface of the paint with a new pad. But my pad is not exactly loaded up because I just dunked it in a couple of buckets. So anyway, you can argue all you want. I'm gonna keep doing it my way because I don't wanna use fricking 15 pads every time I wash a car. I would have needed four just for that front clip right there. I need another two or three up here for this top section. And then I need like eight to 10 more for the sides in order to do it the right way. So I would have needed another pad right there. So anyway, this, this step of the process, so we pre-cleanse the car, got some of the dirt off the surface. Then I'm agitating and removing, you know, or, or getting the rest of the dirt either dislodged or removed in the pad. And then we're gonna rinse again, and then we're gonna dry. And we're gonna use an aid in drying. And that aid will add a extra little surface layer, layer of protection and look to the, to the paint as well as aid in lubrication for drying. So I'm not, you know, essentially dry wiping. But we're gonna blow the car off first and get, you know, most of the water taken care of. But the one thing that, if I can give you one piece of advice when washing a car, is to visit the bucket more often than not. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, was I allowed to wash this? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I feel like you're probably the most overqualified person I know. You know, I've been thinking, Adam, this is my backup plan. I'd be a darn good property manager, car washer guy for you. Think you could afford it if I made like 900 or so? No. <laughs> You'd have to be CEO for that to make sense. Okay, I could do that. That'd be cool. Yeah, it would be cool. Yeah, <laughs> That's my backup plan. Is it? And it all fails, I'm gonna make a call and say, dude. But I'll be the CEO washing all your cars. <laughs> that wouldn't make very much sense though. Yeah. How's it going? It's good. Car's looking good. I showed people how to do uh, clean up your exhaust tip, you know, showed people how to do some, uh, what's that stuff called? Uh, P21S polishing soap. Got, uh, I got the, uh, the yellow circles off the tires that are, you know, the uh, position or the, the weight, weights, whatever, marks. You probably weren't in the right spot anyway, huh? You probably not. I don't, you, you don't balance tires, right? You just put them on. No, I do. I always figured out the yellow circle, though. Yeah. Most good tires, like Michelin's don't have them. These junky nittos do. Yeah, they're pretty good tires. I don't know what kind of weird tire dressing goop you put on here, but. Oh, gee. No, not on this car. Something else is on it. That's Yeah. Yeah. It's going well, though. This, uh, this thing's looking good. How'd you like driving it? Well, I drove it about 100 feet, so. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a long distance for you. Yeah, it is. How is it? This is all right. Any it's a little shaky, a little, a little vibrating. Yeah. It needs a warm up, you can tell. Yep. Yeah. I've probably still been driving it in a while. Last time this car was in Connecticut. Oh, really? Uh -huh. I was trying to race TJ. Oh, yeah, you lost. I lost, so. then I won. Oh, I yeah. Oh, okay.
Yeah, but you built it yourself, and he had Tommy build it, right? Is that the excuse? Our shop built it. Yeah. So I really like this wash bay. I was saying, like, it feels right. Just needs a little, little matty upgrading, you know. The lights are new. Those are you haven't seen those old ones fail. Oh yeah. I had easily reused the old ones that used to be up in my park section. I threw them up there. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like it would be pretty well lit for the nighttime washing. How do you feel about uh, no center caps on the go except center? Caps? Well, I like it as long as you paint the hub, you know, or you have some sort of nice looking looking hub thingy, you know? There's some people that make like 3D printed, uh, or like, uh, actually, I think it's a billet insert, four T's that don't accept center caps, that yeah. don't accept screws to keep them in. Yeah, so if you just painted all that in there, then it looks fine, I think. Yeah. Or if you can like go crazy and take it off and like anodize it or do something crazy, yep. that would be cool. I mean, everything in there was new, but you know, just no matter what, it was oxidizing. What I was thinking I'd like to do out here is if I did like a rock bed, like dug it out, mm -hmm. and then all the water can run oh, into that. It doesn't just like eat up the grass. Yeah, yeah, and the, the, it would be you know where it drains out. This could be really cool back here. It just needs In the a summer. It sucks. Publishers indoor. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. It would be cool if we did a bunch of Viper fans, yep. like on all four corners. You know, for filming that's no good because then it's too loud. But for you know just general washing, it could be really sick make it a little bit more comfortable here. The other thing at night, I'm sure it gets probably pretty mosquito. Yeah. So we're gonna do, at some point, we're gonna do a uh, wash and talk on Adam's channel. It'll be a 17 minute long wash and talk. We'll do it fast, fast, talk real fast. What is a wash and talk like? We've got a lot to talk about. Yeah. But if it's just a wash, yeah, it'd be fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wash and talk. So we'll get Adam out here, we'll do, uh, we'll do something. Um, together out here as well. I'd like to polish a car with you. I feel like I'm ready. Like I've done enough We've done some. to where I could do it and like just have you critique me. And... Yeah, just get a little better. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down. So we got this thing working. I got to place an order on obsessedgarage.com and get some some upgraded parts here because so we're. Rings not work for you? No, they work work great, but we need an OG spec uh, nozzle. Krenz is working great. Brought my own buckets because yours are a little janked, but. We're not far off from a, uh, a good user experience. I feel better after having cleaned up the uh, inside yeah. there. Oh, yeah. So now we want to make sure I'm, I'm scrutinizing a bit more. I want to get all the soap off the car. Not critical to get all the uh, pre-wash off because we're, you know, doing this step. But every car has like a little pocket where soap and stuff stays. That if we were dealing with some sunlight here, then uh, you'd be better off with the soap drying on the car than the bare water because the soap is going to have some. It's going to make the wa the water more closer to pH neutral. Hey, can you grab that P21S so I can blow that? Again, we don't have this in the store yet, but I'm hoping we will at some point. So this is what we spray on our rotors to prevent rusting, or at least aid in rusting. Aid in rust prevention, I guess you could say. It's not a, there's no such thing as a perfect solution, especially if you have some aging older rotors, but it certainly helps. The other thing that can help is pulling back and forth, forth a few times. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to go get, I'll get the LZ hat and the glasses and then we'll do a thumbnail, you know, pointing at the, <laughs> at the window. <laughs> I'm got, getting into this thumbnail thing. Okay. All right, so now we're ready to blow off. So I always do that right before I blow the car off. And now we're gonna do almost all of our drying right now ear protection. This is the uh, OG Apex Air. Well, it's not OG, Apex Air uh, David Stubby. They're finally in stock. We have four or 500 of them available in stock. It's the best Stubby fit finish wise that exists and we finally have them. So just know when you put this on your, on your 
whatever, your ego, it's freaking loud. So you want some ear protection for sure. This, this is the greatest product in the history of ever. It's uh, OG tire, or uh, OG, uh, not tire dressing, OG drying aid. In a press all bottle, it's, it's my favorite thing. Spritz it on here, it's a little lubrication. Stick it in my pocket. Two towels, small drying towel. What do we call this one? Low pile drying aid, Low pile drying aid towel. Take these two puppies, nice and gentle, especially on the purple paint. And we do the initial wiping and then I do the final finish wiping here and we get a nice little additional sacrificial layer. Looks real nice and pretty. Added a little bit of lubrication during that drying process. It flashes away on its own. Works on trim, works on glass. Works on pretty much all coatings I can find. It, uh, it's what you want. So if you're LG guys, and you can do this, just this, you know, if you guys are, you know, just kind of working your way up to, uh, you know, properly caring for your car, you don't have all this gear, you don't have all the money, you don't have all the stuff yet, then uh, this would be the one product. Buy these, buy like, these are expensive, these are, what are these, 10 bucks a piece or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, eight or nine bucks a piece. They're not cheap. But buy like three or four of them and then watch a bunch of my videos on how to wash them. You're gonna wash them by themselves, you know, with other microfiber towels, with, uh, with rags to rich as it's called. It's a specific product for washing microfiber. I do sections, stay organized. I don't want to spray too large of a section that I can't get to in a reasonable amount of time. Flip my towel off and, and these towels actually get a little better as they get a little damper. You know, the first wipes don't work quite as well as the, oh geez, freaking amateur, gosh. What kind of amateur drops his towel, Nick? I'm putting them on the bottom. See, that's the cool thing about Swiss tracks. If I would have dropped that, it probably wouldn't have mattered. If we had, uh, you know, in, like when I wash in my garage. So see, even that little bit of soap that came out of the trunk, not a, not a problem. It'll just wipe off and won't leave all kinds of spots or streaking or anything like that. So people get real nervous about soap, worry more about standing water than soapy water. It'd be much better off having soapy water dry. Huh? Yeah, you're not using mine. I don't want you to mess mine up. He didn't hear me. I feel like hooking the tractor blower up. We're building our pickleball court for you. Oh. I heard you're a big pickleball guy. What else do I need to talk about, Mike? Oh yeah, you want you guys, I'm telling you, man, you need to go watch the LZ build. Even if you're not into houses, you will be at the end of this. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's all coming together as I planned. I thought for sure there'd be some major snafu or some major disaster. And uh, in this part of the process, I mean, there still could be some coming, for, coming, coming up when we dig into some of the cabinets and some of the more expensive stuff that we installed, but the demo part, everything we wanted to do, we're gonna be able to do, which is gonna be freaking sweet. Yeah, so this car is original paint. There's some areas that he'll probably repaint at some point, but you know, like to try to keep it original. So there's some deep, deep water spot etching and stuff, but we thought the trunk was gonna to be toast, but we were able to bring that back to life. And so he hasn't had any paint done on it. There was also some PPF on the front that 
was removed that peeled some paint on the front bumper. So the front bumper is real, real close to the end of its life. But for what this car is, it's pretty decent. We were able to get it looking pretty good. We thought it was a full repaint no matter what. And then after we polished it, it actually turned out really nice. And then frickin' Adam has all the luck. What do you buy this thing for like a hundred and something thousand and it's worth like 400 now or something crazy like that. Yeah, I do like washing cars and everything is together and working. But then again, some of the in, what, was it, what would we say, like in, in or like mid-wash pursuit of fixing some stuff, tweaking stuff, it's part of the fun. It's like mid Adam LZ project at the house. I'm dialing in his wash bay out here because I'm going to be using it mid project. You know, just always tweaking, always perfecting, always making things a little bit better. That to me is the best part of life. Most people, I think they freaking hate that because it ends up being a lot of work, but I don't know. It just makes me feel like I've got a place in this world doing that kind of stuff doing those little mid-project tweaks. Making things a little better. We didn't get the pop from Adam though with his with our cleanup out here because uh, he'd never even, he hadn't seen it in six months. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. He probably thought it always looked like that. So that's why where this product is better than, and this isn't my product. This is a freaking B&B product. It's not like I developed it, just found it. And, uh, Long story. You guys that have been around long know the whole story. I'm not taking credit for it. But this version of it is the best version of it because it's not, we took the scent out, we took the color out because it made the product very unstable. Then they tried to, my friends at B&B tried to get me to do a V2 version because this one's a lot harder to get right. And I'm like V2, it's like V minus two because V1 is the one. No one hasn't been improved yet. So, I'd be hard pressed to find something better than this, but I don't know, we'll see. I'll punt at the millisecond that I find something I like more. That's a, uh, that's a mighty guarantee. So I think what we should do is we'll make a, uh, not a kit, but in the description, I'll have uh, Tommy and Nick put together all the links to all the stuff we just used in this video. And if I were you, Black Friday, I would just add all of them to your cart, all the ones you don't have already, and just freaking buy them. Because for washing, this is what you need. You need the, do we still have Ego 580s? It's been discontinued. You want the Ego 580 that I just used to dry this. You want the press-all bottles. You want this exact setup. All the roughly, probably what, 30, 35 products I just used in this process here, you want all of them. Just do it, I'm telling you. And now's the time to do it. It's the only sale of the year I run. Unless you're an Inside the Hex member where the sale is year round, but if you become an Inside the Hex, Hex Plus member, you get Matty Vlogs. I've even had my darn shirt off a few times in there for the ladies on my uh, cold punch. <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm just messing with you. Uh, and showing the cold punch is a freaking white out. The camera like exposure was going whoo, like almost broke the sensor and uh, but inside the Hex, if you become a Hex Plus member, you can um, get free shipping and 15% off this week. Or not this week, but this weekend. So we're hoping to get this video done today. We'll see how it goes. If not, it'll be up Monday morning, so you have the rest of Monday to get your orders in. This is a big car. I feel like I should have been done a long time ago. I was saying on the LZ vlog, there's no more humidity. Well, I'm freaking sweating. It's 
It's really hot. I think this swamp has like a different level of humidity, you know? It's not good. All right, let's do the door jams. Let's do trunk. Open this up. Yeah, this wash bay is good, man. This is the key part to all you zip tied drifter bros that live life of dirt. You've got to do this every time. You do it every time. It takes like freaking 30 seconds. And then if you ever get a girl, if you were ever fortunate enough to get a girlfriend, then she would see your door jams and say, oh, this dude, his other cracks and crevices are clean, you know? <laughs> it's a microcosm. You don't want a drifter girl. You want like a, you know, like a, like an Auburn graduate girl when you're a drifter guy, you know, you want the opposite. And they're looking for the you know, dirt behind your ears. And so this, this is a key part in the future success of your uh, pursuit of the ladies. If you're asking for Uncle Maddie's advice here. Am I from my right or my right here? So now that's clean and it stays clean forever. And then that means that's what your toothbrush drawer looks like. That's what your bank account looks like. It's what your whole existence looks like. There's effort, there's organization, there's structure. There's a little bit of cleanliness. I'm telling you, do those little things in life. It's going to make you better at stuff. Because then you'll apply that to your job. You'll apply that to everything your relationships. It's a little tip from Uncle Maddie to you. And then you'll be able to buy all the stuff you could ever want in an obsessed garage and you'll stop complaining about how expensive everything is because you'll be making tons of jack, tons of cash. When you take care of your door jams, it all life just starts to come together, I'm telling you. And it only takes a few minutes. This is my favorite part of the whole wash process. The details. And no, this is not detailing. This is car washing. Detailing is, some, is another level. We'll get you there. Just hang around. Just start listening to Uncle Maddie, and I'll get you. I'll get you a, a GT3 before you know it. You'll get yourself a GT3. Not a GTR. You don't want a GTR. You want a GT3. Like, as nice as this car is, this is completely unacceptable to me. Like, I would never have a car like this. It's not good enough. It's not that I'm better than the car. It's just that the car, you know, to have one of these, they're just not, you know, to, to buy one that is, that is to the level I would want it would be, $600,000 because, you know, even this one has quite a bit of jank from, you know, being it has 61,000 kilometers on it. So it's been, you know, it's been driven, it's been used, which is good, but it's a little janked, even as nice as it is. A spot under the hood. Get this here. Interior doesn't really need any cleanup. I hate interiors anyway. Let's do the wheels and then we're done. That's pretty. There's a lot of monies under there. In the off camera, sure doesn't run like it looks. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> So this is one of those things where if I just come in here and just touch this up, every time I do this, I don't have to like scrub or dust or do any extra work. I can just do a quick wipe and keep everything clean, dust free. I should play pickleball on Adam's channel just to tick Michelle off. Is that you refuse to play? It's for nerds. She wants you to play with you. Oh yeah. 
then I refuse. Okay, looking pretty good. All right, let's do the wheels and go put it away. So two towels, whole car, you know, one of each. This one's pretty damp, but still good to go. All right, so I'm gonna hit the wheels with a little bit of drying aid. Nothing's better than cleaning TEs because they're so simple. I've got this, which is an actual interior brush from Detail Factory, and, uh, and then OG tire dressing. Gosh, it looks like I have all OG products. Well, I don't really have my own products. Both of those are from B&B. &B. They were catalog items, but they both happen to be the best in class. And until I find something that's better, they're the ones. So I just kind of hit this, hit the rotor hat. Gosh, that's beautiful. These brakes are sick. I've always wanted endless brakes on something on my Civics. A couple of nibs here. And then we take our tire dressing, spray it on, and then treat the tire. So I don't like shiny. So what we'll do is probably off camera, but I'll probably drive this over. I'll take this towel with me, drive it back to the garage over there, and then I'll wipe it, wipe it flat. So I do have tons of interior videos on the channel. If you're new here, just search the channel. So if you go to the channel, it's like you sort of scroll to the right at the top where it says like about and all that stuff. And then there's a little magnifying glass you can click on and just search the Obsessed Garage channel specifically and just type in interior. And I've got dozens and dozens of videos on how I, what products I use in the interior. Or you could just go to obsessedgarage.com and go to the interior uh, section. And there's all kinds of packages that you can buy that take, take the guesswork out. And you'll know exactly what to get. Nick is on all kinds of videos in there showing you how to use it, what it is. So make sure to go check that out as well. That's also, everything on the site is on sale. Pretty much everything. Set this down. So just giving the, not so much worried about the lubrication part of the drying aid here, but mainly just kind of giving my coating a little topper. These probably have Deluxe and Gliss on them. Right now I'm using Armor wheel coating. It's really incredible. It's the best wheel coating on the market. You don't need a lot. Just, just enough. There is the freaking yellow thing that snuck on me on the bottom there. Shoot, I got my thing wet. Last one, and we're done. All right, everyone, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching, thanks for being here. If you haven't subscribed already, I know I haven't asked for subscriptions ever. Please like the video, subscribe to the video, go to obsessedgarage.com, buy some stuff, help me continue to pursue, you know, creating packages for us in the car world to take care of our cars maybe in a little different at a little different level than what most are used to it really doesn't have to be complicated uh, we want to simplify the process make it as comfortable as functionally excellent as as as, as possible so i'm going to go put this away but stay tuned i'm going to do a bunch of adam's cars uh i want to do his well i'll save it for the videos when they come up i'm going to do this at least once a week i'm here for a couple of months also make sure to check out the uh, adam lz compound house project that we're doing it's really really cool and uh, yeah, stay tuned for more crazy stuff. I'm gonna keep, uh, keep doing it. We'll see you soon, thanks for watching. This is my second thumbnail ever. <laughs>